This is Twit. Google captured the gaming world's attention late last year. You may remember this with a mm-hmm. limited release of Stadia for cloud gaming. I think that limited release is going to become a wide release here pretty soon. Uh, mixed reviews on that, myself included, I will admit. And now NVIDIA is finally opening the doors to the public for its own cloud gaming service called GeForce Now. You've probably heard of it because it's been in the works for a very long time mm-hmm. uh, in different iterations and all that. Joining us to talk about how this differs from Stadia and what's on offer really is Sean Hollister from The Verge. Welcome back, Sean. Hi. Glad to be here. Yeah, it's great to have you back. It's been a little while. So you wrote about this, uh, so you would know. Um, Well, first of all, how much experience and time did you have with uh, Stadia, and were you impressed with it at all? Uh, I did the review of Stadia for The Verge, and I am exceptionally impressed by cloud gaming in general. And I like Stadia in particular because it drove kind of a new quality bar for this idea. I've always wanted to be able to take my games anywhere. And while we're not quite there yet because... 5G networks aren't quite there yet. This idea that I don't need a console to play the games, I can just have a little dongle on my TV or an old crappy laptop or even my phone playing AAA games. It's something I've been testing out since 2010, I would say, back when OnLive and Gaikai were doing this thing. NVIDIA has been working on this nearly as long. So when Stadia came in here and threw a lot of legitimacy behind the idea, Google saying, you know, cloud gaming is going to be a thing. We're going to do it. We're going to put our, you know, our, our huge infrastructure toward that. I was really excited. The reality is that they have good technology, but they don't have all the games that we thought they might have and all of the unique features that might make cloud games more interesting than regular games aren't there yet. So it's kind of a limited selection right now where you're paying for a glorified beta. And what really frustrates me about Stadia is that you're paying three ways to Mm. get into this beta. You have to pay $130 to get your hardware. You'll have to start paying $10 a month for their service, which, you know, allows you to play these these games over the cloud and you also have to buy the games on top of that they don't just give you more than a few of the games at a time in their ten dollar a month subscription so generally you're buying your big games on top of that as well geforce now totally different proposition they say not only can you try this thing for free right now for an hour at a time which is something that stadia will eventually let you do for free as well but they haven't said when uh but you can pay just $5 a month to basically bring all of your uh, a, a vast a, a vast collection of your existing PC games whether you bought them on Steam whether you bought them on Epic whether you bought them on uh, U- Ubisoft's Uplay or the Epic uh, sorry or the or Blizzard's Battle.net those are the four major ones that they support uh, whether you bought them in any of these platforms you can now take those things and you can bring them to you know your phone here is uh, Sekiro Shadow uh, Shadows Die Twice, which I think the brightness is a little too much. Let me turn that down so my camera can actually show you a little bit of that. But uh, this is uh, the the Samurai um, hack and slash game. Very difficult game that I love uh, quite a bit. Running here on uh, effectively a Pixel phone uh, with GeForce Now. And this is not running you know, from my computer. This is running over the cloud from servers in uh, probably San Jose, California. is where wow. their closest servers to me are. And so I can you know, I can run around in this game and there's not a terrible amount of lag. Uh, I will not be able to play this competently looking at a reflection <laughs> on the screen. Come on, this you is can not an ideal it. Yeah, you can do it. scenario. <laughs> can I? Can I really? Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's also kind of a dark game. Okay, we'll move on from that. Uh, but they've been, they've been invested in this technology for a very long time. Yeah. Uh, starting with the uh, NVIDIA Shield portable here, which is uh, they NVIDIA was going to have their own portable game system back in uh, 2012, 2013. They were building this thing, and uh, in 2013, they uh, back when they announced this thing originally, it was you can stream, you can play games on this Android handheld device that are on Android. You can additionally play games um, that are streaming from the, your own computer on your local network. That's kind of cool. But in the whole while, they were working on these cloud-based GPUs so that you can stream them over the cloud. And they actually helped Gaikai back in you know, 20, 2012 or so with their servers. They helped other companies like Ubitus with their cloud gaming servers as well. And now, it's just finally just now, NVIDIA is saying, we think there's an opportunity for us to do this ourselves. And the nice thing about that, I know I'm not letting you ask a lot of questions. The nice thing about that is... Um, because they don't have a a brand of their own, a particular gaming 
a brand of their own to push. They're just the middleman between all these different publishers. It's kind of bringing a lot of games together from other publishers. Um, the other publishers are probably more willing to work with them than they would be uh, necessarily when they're talking when, – when Sony comes by and Microsoft comes by and says, we want this thing to be exclusive. When Google comes by, has to build a game platform from scratch mm. um, and get these publishers to chime in and bring their games to the platform. NVIDIA can say, well, your games already run on our GPUs. You can keep the relationship with your consumers. Um, you can you get all the money because they're buying them you know through Steam they're buying them through you know UPlay already it's the existing relationships just let us put them on this additional platform where we can make gaming more accessible I think that's a better pitch than some of the other pitches. One thing that that sticks out for me um, is that Stadia might be not as ideal for people who already have, like you said, like have a, a game library. So maybe Stadia is the solution for someone who doesn't already have a console and who's like thinking of tipping their toes, dipping their toes in the console world and maybe want a less expensive way to do it, right? 1080p streaming is free. All they have to do is buy the game and they have a system to play it. Whereas the NVIDIA um, GeForce Now approach might be better fit for for already gamers, for people who have already built up a library and want that library to be portable. Would you say that's a fair kind of uh, assumption? I don't actually know if that's true. Okay. Um, okay. When when the free tier for Stadia comes out, and all we know about that is that uh, Google's Phil Harrison has said it's sometime in the next few months, whatever few months mean, we right. will be at a point where both NVIDIA and Google will say, you can try our thing for free. All you have to do is buy the game. Mm -hmm. And in NVIDIA's case, you, if you're buying that game from Steam, you're buying that game from Uplay, you're buying that game from Epic Game Store or Blizzard. In Google's case, you're buying that game from Google. But either way, the proposition is pay $60 for your game, play it for free with us at 1080p in the cloud. There's not that much difference there. The difference is that Google has to negotiate all those relationships from mostly from scratch. I mean, they, you know, they have executives there from Sony and from Microsoft helping them negotiate that have got that have jumped ship to Google to make them do this. So there's a relationship there, but, um, but both of these platforms will be offering something fairly comparable. It's just that they have to negotiate the relationship. They have to port them to Linux to get them on Stadia, whereas they already run on GeForce now. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just it's mostly about the licensing deals. In the future, theoretically, Google could be a much more interesting platform because not only do they have that value proposition, but they're asking developers to build games for the cloud with features that are unique to the cloud, games that you could not – that could not exist before because instead of having a single – basically the equivalent of a single computer that would be under your desk now being in the cloud instead, Google can say, well, actually, let's let this game – use four of our servers at once. Let's let this game give you a real-time stream, a video stream of what all of your teammates are doing in the game, which is something they've already rolled out with uh, Ghost Recon Breakpoint and are bringing to more features in the future. What if, your, uh, what if your gameplay sessions could be natively streamed to YouTube within our infrastructure mm -hmm. at oh, high boy. frame rate, high resolution? These are things that, uh, that Google is promising will come, That and Google itself is putting some of its money into its own studios to build games that are only possible in the cloud. They're not promising those games will be here anytime soon, but that's something they say that they're doing. I have never in, in the, in the, you know, what is this? All, all, about a decade covering this technology. I have never met any game publisher willing to tell me that they are building games exclusively for the cloud. Now, Mr. Hollister, when this Stadia came out, I was totally confused because I'm thinking, all right, I'm going to have to pay $10 a month, buy the game, and I'm going to get 4K streaming, and it's just going to be an amazing experience. But as Mr. Howard uh, said earlier, we had it here in the studio, and boy, it did not look good. It was so choppy, and I'm thinking, there's no value in this. So you're telling me Google is saying, hey, we're going to fix this. It's going to be worth your 10 bucks a month plus your $60 for the game. And we're going to bring even more to the, to the table. You, you bring up a wonderful point, And that is that the quality of networks in the United States varies ridiculously widely. Mm -hmm. um, and, and people 
I would say by and large do not understand the various things that go into this, the very the various the various reasons why cloud gaming may or may not work for them, and some of the fixes that need to be uh, made to be made to make that work. Some of this, a lot of the stuff is not on Google's end. It is our right. existing infrastructure, infrastructure is not capable, and so I, I think it's helpful to think about the various parts of. Um, of of the internet that are required to make cloud gaming work, we most people understand the download speeds that they get from their internet service provider. Mm-hmm. You, you know, you, your 150 megabit per second cable connection is a lot faster than your 25 megabit per second, um, which is, I believe, the current definition of high speed broadband in the United States is is below. Mm-hmm. You know, 25 megabit per second is far below yes. what um, the optimal download speed for cloud gaming is but bandwidth is just one of the components that bandwidth is this is the quality of the stream that we can the image quality of the stream that we can give you at its best so that's where you know your 4k comes in Uh perhaps is download speed but there's also latency latency depends on one how far you are away from the servers. I am, you know, I am fairly close in, in Union City, California to the San Jose, California servers uh, that NVIDIA has. There's a lot of other companies, probably including Google, that have uh, server farms in San Jose or nearby. I'm a pretty good use case. I'm a pretty good case for this. There are some people in the country who are far enough away from a server that the time between them pressing a button on their controller and their character reacting on screen will simply never be good enough because they are physically located too far away. Yeah. NVIDIA says they're covering 80% of the high-speed broadband population right now with their servers. That's 20% automatically that are not. Right. So That's a lot they, of people. There's 20% right there. Big. There's also the, um, the, the ongoing quality of the connection to think about. Not only is it, you know, the, okay, so I, I, um, I'm close enough to the server. Let's say I'm close enough to the server. My download speeds are good enough. I should get a – it should be quick when I press the button to, for the time my character reacts on screen. The image quality looks good. Great. Um, if that connection has any deviance in it and whether that deviance be – my wife is streaming something on mm. her, you know, on, on the on the TV downstairs. It's, we're a, we're a, we're a household that's cut the cord. Maybe she's doing some Netflix, some Hulu, Disney Plus, something like that. Mm-hmm. She's streaming some 4K. All of a sudden, I might have enough not enough bandwidth, but also my latency might be impacted a little bit because my home router has to deal with different things going on. Mm-hmm. If my house is full of smart home gadgets that are all, you know, taking up some time there might do a thing. Um, there's also the how many boxes are on your network separating you from your raw internet connection. Uh, in a scenario like your studio or like uh, corporate offices of any kind, honestly, any kind of uh, office building, it's very likely you will not be able to play cloud gaming on a corporate network because there are additional layers of infrastructure in there right. that reduce the response time, right. reduce make that latency much higher um, and create that lag. You got to think about all these various things. And so what's really important is that people get to just easily and simply try cloud gaming for free, see if it works for them and not have to throw money at something that may not work for them as well as it could be. They just need to try it very easily. And I think we get to the point where, uh, and this is what Google is you know, is promising in the future. This is something Guy Kai was working on a decade ago. Uh, you get to the point where you don't need to install an app necessarily. You don't need to put down $130 for a starter kit. You don't even need to sign up for NVIDIA servers. You may get to the point where you will click on a link in a YouTube video. Your, your, your favorite YouTuber will say, hey, check out this game I'm trying right now. Here's a link. You press the link and you're playing instantly. That's not that far away. No. We've seen demonstrations of that already. I have clicked on such links in the past and been dropped into a game in my web browser, right? Like just like that. And and Google had has mentioned that as an upcoming feature on Stadia. That specifically right. is is something that could happen. That sounds like a magical demonstration, it right? To so be browsing the web and promising. instantly you're in inside of a you know a, a very powerful PC running a game that you didn't really have to spend anything on to get that preview. Right. That says something. Um, if you had to at this at this stage, if you had to kind of pick a horse to bet on. It sounds like it might actually be Stadia, but what, what would you pick and why? It is. It, it, you, Stadia has Google has a lot going for it here. Google has a lot going for for it here in the long term. Uh, what they're dealing with now is they need to satisfy the gaming community and early adopters that they intend 
to keep spending on this, that they are not going away, that they're in this for the long right. haul. Um, and I think they need to do some kind of make good and they need to do some kind of relaunch. And they have an obvious opportunity for a relaunch here to reset the expectations around the platform, to lay out a clear roadmap for when things or various features are going to arrive, to when they can get to that. You click the YouTube link and play instantly. Um, they have an obvious opportunity for this when they roll out the free tier of the service. So I imagine they are very hard at work right now figuring out how to message that properly, to not set the expectations too high in the short term. And be like, you know, this is this is a you know a, a five year journey for us, a ten year journey for us, and here are the various points that you are going to be wowed along the way. No, it seems, uh, they, they need to do that. It seems like that free tier would be a good way to come after someone like me that is a fringe gamer. I'm a little bit better than playing Candy Crush, but I'm not necessarily a elite Call of Duty player. So, so does that sound about right? Just to get yeah. someone on the free tier and let them try it out, and maybe it'll it'll hook me in. Yeah, right. And, and to your earlier point about this being for uh, – about cloud gaming services in general, maybe not GeForce Now versus Stadia, but mm -hmm. cloud gaming services in general being for folks who do not necessarily have a giant library of games yet, yeah. uh, who uh, – I, I think in general, the more they make this feel like a console – except even easier because you don't need to buy the discs and you don't need to install patches and downloads and all that kind of stuff. The more they make this feel like a console, the more – the simpler they make that proposition, the better, and it will pull people away from that console model. And it may even expand gaming to folks who would not currently pick up a console even, much less a gaming PC, because it can be that easy when done properly, assuming your connection is good enough, assuming you live close enough, all those kinds of things that you need to just try and see if it works. Lots of For assumptions. <laughs> Lots of assumptions, but – when it's free, yeah, why I not? Mean, yeah, th and that's that's the entry point uh, for both of these mm -hmm. uh, these products, and kind of sounds like, especially at this stage of its development, even though this has been coming a long time, that free tier is essential because that ends up being kind of the taste that pulls people, like you were talking about, mm -hmm. uh, pulls people in uh, suddenly. Like, what what is the barrier when it's free? You can definitely check it out, and if you get something out of that, eventually. Maybe you plan on springing for a little bit more and getting that higher quality, and uh, you've got a you've got an ecosystem, you right? Know, that's that's building around it, so. right?